Well, hello. My name's Penny. I live in the southeast of England with my husband, Pete, and my chickens. And you're most welcome. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Yeah, that sounds like you're joining a club. I mean, thank you for joining me uh, for my chin wag today. Well, what have we got? We've got some crafting. We've got a fascinating fact. We've got Pete's second bit. He, he did another little bit following on from last week about how he joined the army. And we managed to get to Stodmarsh, which is our local nature reserve, not too far away, but it was a bit of a funny story getting there. But I'll tell you that before I introduce the film. So that's what we've got in store today. So shall we start with the crafting? Um, right, well, I'll show you, I've got quite a bit on the go. I, I, this is where I got overwhelmed the other week and I, I still feel overwhelmed because I've got a big bag of shoes here. And you see, is your brain like mine? My brain goes, did it, and then it makes a connection, did it, and then it makes a connection, did it, which is why I can keep talking all day, really. I mean, my friends know that about me. You know, that's why it's called a chin wag, because my brain just goes one thing to the other. And what I've been doing this week is doing all my wardrobe out. I haven't done it out since the beginning of COVID, and I gave up work and all of that so it was time and all I can say is the charity shop has got some real bargains some beautiful clothes that I used to wear to work that I used to wear going out my life's changed now um, I'm, I'm mostly a stay at home except well you see what I do anyway but one thing leads to another you see I see the shoes and I think oh there's a story around those oh there's a story around that but then I've started to get overwhelmed again if I start showing you all the bits that I've got in my head to make. and So I'm keeping it simple. <laughs> That's what I, I gave myself permission to do. So I'm just going to show you the couple of bits that I've finished. Pete's sitting in the garden. He's doing his exercises at the moment. He's been weeding. And as you can imagine in our garden, we've got quite a lot of weeds and they're not little weeds. It's like cutting down that big bush. See, my brain's gone there to there. I could chat about that now. Give me half an hour. Anyway, draw me back. It's just I'm sitting. Oh, can you see him? No, you can't. I thought he might have been reflected, but he's not. <laughs> well, it's the last thing you want to watch him sitting in a chair doing arm exercises. Anyway, let's start, let's start. So I finished, oh, my mum absolutely fell in love with this. She comes here on a Saturday, I'm always around there. And she comes here other days, but she comes for the day on a Saturday and has lunch and we have a good old chin wag. And I put this on her lap, oh, she said, it's so light, it's so, it's so cosy and warm. You start at the corner, I started there actually, and they're all my um, little bits from my socks, from my socks, and you see what's the right side, I think that's the wrong side, That I don't think there is a right and a wrong, yes, that that's the right because of the eye cord. The eye called on the edge. Ooh. I put it with floof. And I get the floof from Lay Family Yarn because it's baby surrey alpaca and silk. So I've had a, a skein of baby surrey alpaca and silk. And then I put it with, I'll show you. I've got a little pot. Well, it's what I used to make my trifles in. But I've got all my little bits of wool in there. I mean, I have got other little bits of wool, but this is the one that's on the table in the lounge. And then out it comes. I don't even think about it, really. And I just, you start at one corner, I was showing you. So you increase. It depends if you're a crafter. If you're a crafter, you'll know this, but if you're not, you may not. So you start off with one, three, and just increase, increase, increase until you get big enough, which was there for me, and then you start decreasing. So, shall I hold it up?
there. I think you can see that. And you can see how light and warm it is. And pretty. That's the thing. But Mum loved it. So I think I might send off to Lay Family Yarn and get some more floof, they call it. And just start knitting those other bits. But I have got rather a lot on the needles at the minute. So Mum can use it when she comes. I have knitted a... This is the Habitation Throw by Helen Stewart. And I have knitted her Dust of Snow. And um, they're beautiful patterns. Uh, if you've ever tried a Helen Stewart. The Dust of Snow is just like this. But it melds. The colours meld. And I've knitted three of those for friends and family. And it's a nice way of using up small bits and landing up with a beautiful, beautiful creation. So Helen Stewart. I also did Helen Stewart's Silver River Shawl, which I have shown you on earlier episodes. I've knitted a few of those as well and they are really, really lovely. Her patterns are second to none. So I've got my quilt to show you that I've finished. And Pete and I, we, we don't sleep in the same bed. We haven't done for donkey's years. We've, it's our anniversary next week or the week after. No, the week after and it's 54 years. Well, properly had a bedroom each after the girls left home, which I mean is a long time ago. I think... My eldest daughter's been married 34 years. And probably my youngest daughter's been married 30 years. I don't know. I can't remember all dates and numbers. But you can't sleep in the same bed as Pete, which is a bit limiting for us. Oops, that was a bird flying into the window. A bit limiting going, staying in a hotel because we just wouldn't ever get an, in, an ounce of sleep. And I know some of you do camper vans. I mean, the thought of a camper van with Pete, I mean, I'd pay you if you could. Well, you couldn't. You couldn't. I mean, he slept around my mum's once, well, more than once, and she just was absolutely amazed. She said, you go in and check on him and see if he was awake, you know, in the morning for a cup of tea. He wasn't, but she said his head was at the bottom of the bed. And then another time she checked and he's sleeping crossways across the bed there's no covers on then there's all the co <gasps> honestly he's asleep when he does it and I know my daughter Kim my eldest daughter she actually sleepwalks so yeah it's not much fun with them so hence he's got his own bedroom you see one thing leading to another and his brother um, did some paintings beautiful paintings of a place place called Bude in Cornwall and he gave Pete the paintings he's got two of them in his room one of them's over his bed and boy does it go with the quilt I'll put some photos up here of the quilt on the bed whilst I'm talking and then I'll show you the quilt in real life I chose this for the backing which really goes it's a sand colour and I like the edging we chose. It's a sort of linen. Can you see that? It's like sand. It's a lot darker in real life, that edging. If I take it away, you might be able to see. My friend and I, we went to the show, not Ali Pali. We went to the show in Islington. And it was just at the end of February. And of course, March was locked down. And I don't usually buy kits. I've said that before, but... Well, I like this kit, so I thought I would try it. And my local quilting group has got um, the lady who designed this quilt, Janet, is it Janet Clare? Oh dear, I can't, as I'm talking, I can't think of names. Anyway, her mum's in our local quilting group, so I want to nip this along and show her. But I started it, you start it in, well, you start in the four inch blocks. So you make that block, which is quite intricate. I think I've shown you on previous episodes. I mean, to make that block, it's quite intricate. But you see, I didn't get it right. Those stripes are all supposed to go the same way. And as I started, 
it wasn't right. Now, me, I will always undo something. I'll frog something. I will get it right. Here's, here's my next one. Can you see the stripes? They're wrong. And of course, then I realized that and I thought, when I get to the end, I'll do it. But that shows you how life was when I started those blocks. We were in lockdown. Um, I just retired. So life completely changed for me. Of course, on the other blocks, as you can see, the lines are right. But I left those two just as a reminder of how I was feeling at the time. I don't think I can I don't think I can hold it up but I need Pete Not a very good job of doing that. What I've done, I sent off to um, So Sweet Violet and I bought one of her little, their leather, and I put that on the bottom. I didn't know where I was going to use them, but they're very pretty. But that's on the bottom so that when you put it on the bed, because it's got a right way up, you know that that's the bottom of the quilt. So I'm pleased with it. And I had it professionally quilted at Smart Frogs, and Pete loves it. I'm just chatting. Did you? No, I'm chatting during, during my vlog. He thought I was just looking. <laughs> what? Sitting here with my microphone, just looking. What was I look? Anyway. So that's it. So that's my quilt. So a finished item. I'm really pleased. And uh, it's beautiful on the bed. So that's that. What else? This, yeah, so that's two finished items. And then I got some more fabric. As you know, I'm making the quilt for baby. I've done one block, two block, three block. And then I was going to start my fourth block. But I laid it out on the bed and I thought, if I do a fourth block, this is going to work out massive. We don't want it that big. So I was quite pleased. One, two, three. Now I've got to do two and one, which I've I've nearly done. Um, but I'll show you that next time. And yeah, somebody did ask if I'd show how I do it. So I'm going to try this week and do my best to see if I can make a little film of that because I know you said you liked hand sewing. So could I show you how to do it? So I'll do my best. I haven't got all that overhead and all this, that and t'other, you see. Anyway, I'll do my best this week. So that was for my daughter Kim to keep at her house for baby when he comes over. And this is for baby to have at his house. And so I'll show you. I'm going to do the same pattern as I did for Tommy because I love the pattern. It's just the right size. It's it's easy to do and I'm going to do this on the machine because there's a lot of long lines to sew. And yeah, I'm doing the other one by hand, but this will be done on the machine. So here it is. I love it. It's got tractors cows, swallows, rabbits or hares, sheep. It's beautiful and the colours are beautiful. It's going to be for the one of the blocks. I have got it all worked out. I'll show you that as I cut it out. I'll take you along as I make it. Then there's this to go with it. Let me show you it all together. There's that. So you see it picks out the yellow and the... It's quite pretty in real life. This is taking the colours out a bit. It's very pretty. It's more cream, it's not white. It's cream with pretty lilac flowers and blue and little aquamarine. So that's that one. This one might come up properly. Yeah, that's that's come up properly. 
sheep, oak leaves, swallows, because the swan and it picks up in the colour here and the little house. So it all looks lovely together. There we are. And um, quite a dark blue. Thought that would be striking, bring it together. And then uh, there is a, a panel that goes with. And it was seven pounds and I just couldn't resist it. So I thought I might have, well I will, I'll have fabric over from that. And I might put it together and make the backing. Um, so let me show you the panels. There's two. There's four. There's six. And eight. It's got these lovely colours. So I thought, I didn't, well, Pete said, oh, don't cut that up. <laughs> He's very good at all this. He loves it all himself. Don't cut all that up. So I thought, well, I'll use that for the backing and then just put an edge round. And that would be nice, both sides and something for baby to look at as he grows older. So I think that's all for my makes. So should we do the fascinating fact? It's been a bit tricky. In fact, I nearly didn't do the vlog today because... My next door neighbour was clearing her front garden and instead of taking all the stuff down to the end of the garden, they decided to have a bonfire in the front garden and it just found its way through my windows and they did it every day running for about four or five days yet in the end, day before yesterday, I phoned her and said I can't take any more because I'm allergic to the smoke. Oh, she said. Don't even, we, why? We won't have any more. I said, oh, I'm ever so sorry. No. And she was very apologetic, which was lovely of her. But it affected my throat. And it got me thinking about smells. Now, Pete was fine with it. How something might set me off, but not you. Or something might set you off, but not me. And, well, that certainly set me off. I'm no good with wood smoke at all, which is why I haven't got a a wood fire or a wood burner, whatever they are. It wouldn't suit me at all. So we're down to the, uh, oh yes, that's something else I've got to say. We're down to the um, central heating here. Although we've got one of the gas coals, but I think this year it's going to be a bit too expensive to run. Except for those days when I just fancy sitting around it. So, ah yes, we've bought ourselves, now you see this is where my head's gone. Where was I? Oh yes, so taste. So the fascinating fact is about the sense of taste. Because I could taste that wood and it was truly horrible and it was getting on my chest. So it prompted me to think about taste of the, 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 the smell and taste. So. Let's put that up now before I make any more hash of anything else. So your tongue, as well as other parts of your mouth and throat, includes clusters of skin cells called taste buds. Many are located within papillae on the surface of the tongue. A taste bud contains up to a hundred receptor cells, each of which can detect one of four types of taste. Sour, salty, sweet or bitter. Spicy is in a different category altogether. Spices stimulate pain receptors, not taste buds. In any event, taste receptor cells are connected to sensory nerves that when stimulated by chemicals in food, instantly transmit signals to, lower, to the lower brain stem. Taste, however, involves more than your mouth. The 5 million odour receptors in your nose, which allow you to detect some 10,000 unique odours, play a vital role in the tasting process. It has been estimated that about 75% of what we call taste is actually the result of what we smell. 
Scientists have developed an electrochemical nose that uses chemical gas sensors as an artificial olfaction device. Nevertheless, neurophysiologist John Cower quoted in research Penn State notes, any artificial device is going to be extremely simplistic in comparison to the biology, which is wonderfully elegant and sophisticated. No one would deny that the sense of taste adds pleasure to a meal. Researchers are still baffled though by what causes people to favour one type of taste over another. Science may have many of the basics of the human body down, says Science Daily, but our sense of taste and smell are still somewhat of a mystery. It's true, isn't it? I'm sure you uh, can identify with a lot of that. Anyway, I could certainly taste that smoke and I could smell it all right. So it's uh, on to Pete's piece now. And I wanted to read you his from his army book. He wanted me to. And his army book said... What did his army book say? An excellent cook who has mastered his trade well. He's been selected to cook for the GOC London District and has proved he is an outstanding tradesman. Makes every effort to further his knowledge of his trade and works without supervision. I thought that was really nice. A lovely testimony to all the hard work. How last week he said he'd landed up, you know, losing his way a bit but how you can easily find your way if you're given the incentive. And uh, yeah, back to cooking for him and that's what he loved to do. So I'll put that up and then I'll have a chat with you afterwards about how the change, because of the uh, prices that are going up, how we've changed our way of cooking a bit. I'll see you after Pete's piece. So we're carrying on. So here we are. He's joined the army. Tell me a little bit more about that. Tell me how you how you did it. You just went out one day and I just went down to Finchley, you know, and uh, to the recruiting office. We yeah. Went in, uh, got talked into going back to cooking, which seemed a good idea. Uh, and then the next thing I knew, I was at St. Omer's Barrage, uh, St. Omer's so you Barracks. Went, so we used to have in the high street, join the army, army recruiting shops. Yeah, in certain areas. In, and th there was one the there. Near, North Finchley, yeah. Oh, Tally North Oak, Finchley. Okay. <coughs> Where I went to Hendon Tech, actually. Oh, okie doke. So you walked in. And they talked me into being, you know, going into chefing, cooking. Right. So I was at St. Omer's Barracks in the first six... St. Omer's Barracks, where's that? Aldershot. Aldershot, yeah, right. Yeah, everything was Aldershot then, more or less. Yeah. And then the uh, first six weeks was basic training. Yeah. Which I really enjoyed. Yeah, really. Do you want to get a drink? No, I'm all right. You're all right. Okay. Crawl through mud, do a bit of marching. You like the basic well, training? I quite enjoyed it. In fact, I liked it so much. Yeah. At the end, uh, they said to me... Would you, because I was older than everybody else, most of the recruits were like 17. Okay. And I was about 20 then. Yeah. I was 21 when I met you. I met you in 67. Oh. 45, 55, 65, 20, uh, 22. So oh, you, 22. You were 22 when I met you. Yeah. Well, well. Well, you were 22 in January. And I met you New Year's yeah, Eve. I was in the army. I was passed out and everything. Oh, then, you were it? in the army because my heart sunk. Yeah, that's right. Because I met you. That's another story. Yeah. How I met you. But I said, oh, you know, I only looked at you and thought, here's my knight in shining armour. I'm going to marry this guy. <laughs> and um, then you told me in the army. And that was not part, not part I'd of been, the plan. I'd been brought up with this Cold War. All of what I talk about with mum, there was no way I was going to marry anybody in the army. I couldn't have done it. I'd have worried too much. You're on my wall. Oh. I'd have worried too much. I know it. So my heart sunk when you said you were in the army. Mm. But nevertheless, you were. But you'd been in the army then for quite a while. Yeah, well, I, yeah. I, only, I think I only lasted a year and a half, didn't I? 
Anyway, that's just another. Oh, we better not go down the no. time rate. But anyway, so I started. I started. Uh, yeah, my tra Train. skills training. Then I've done my marching and all okay. that. Okay. And that's when I, the chap found out I'd got sitting guilds, and he was doing it, and asked me to help him, and and so. Um, there was a passing out parade with the junior leaders, which is a young army, if you like. Right. Uh, we don't want to go down that thing. No. But the the, um, the the guests of honour were Billy Butlin, you remember? the Yes, Butlin's Holiday Camp. And Madame Prunier. Okay. Who had a fish restaurant in Soho. Okay. And guess where it was? Right next to the Trocadero. Well, I know. So I, I didn't know her, but I knew of her restaurant. Yes. And anyway, they came in and said, we're doing, because they always used to do a big spread and that yes. sort of thing. And they said, could you do the, could you cook the um, oh, pâtés for us? Yeah. So I did all the pâtés for that. So I'd cook for, for them. Yeah. And then I went off. I, I, when I saw, you, you had a choice of where you wanted to, more or less, of where you wanted to go. And because I'd done ordinary cooking, yeah. I saw one, it was called... Hospital cooking, and you were cooking from gen generals and field marshals right yeah. the way down to privates, and and not only that, all their families. Yes. Because they all could go to an army hospital in those days. Right. So well, it's I, all closed now, isn't it? Oh, they haven't, there's no army catering corps anymore. Wow. They, that's been disbanded. They amalgamate with the, with the uh, whoever. Like, yeah. I think there's a couple of people. They're not called the army. It was disbanded. All the... changed. We're yeah. talking about a gone by. Oh yeah, a bygone goes... age. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. But he, um, it was interesting because I so I thought, oh, I'll go for that. So it was a B two. You got an extra. You got extra money as well. Okay. So um, and so I did all my training. Passed out. You were out. earning eight pound a week, weren't you? Uh, not then. I all don't right. Think. That's when I passed out. I earned eight, uh, eight pounds. No, that you were only eight pound a week when I met you. Was a, oh. well, mm. that's funny because I earned eight pound fifty a week as a chocadero. Oh, <laughs> so I think it shows you that. You know, yes. But, um. Anyway, yeah. where was I? Yeah, it's a hospital you went. Yeah, for. so uh, yeah, they were passed out and all the rest, and I put, and I, then you get a posting, and you don't know where you're going. No. But you know that you're going to a hospital because that's what I trained as. Okay. And there was three in London. Yeah. And I got the one behind the Tate Gallery. Yeah, super. And I, I got to, I actually had a posting in London. Millbank. Millbank. It was your stamping ground. M yeah, more or less, just yeah. down the road. Yeah, your stamping And I could go ground. home. And, yes. Uh, you, you can only go home at certain times. Yeah. But, so I'm working there and thoroughly enjoying myself. Yeah. And I don't... Are they just when you were doing your training, yeah, they did say to you, "You're so good at this. Would you like to become a trainer?" Oh, that was, but that was at the marching and all that stuff. Yes, you, he's good at it. Yeah, he looked I, brilliant in his uniform. But I thought, no, I don't want to. I, I look but silly in my uniform. I'm the, I can't wear a uniform. I look, I, I look like. You didn't look silly. Oh, I could never get the berry right. And I look, oh. I always looked but they right did ask you to become a trainer, didn't they? But yeah, they asked me to, to stay on as a, drill, a drill pig, they called it. See, a lot of the lads that were joined up with me were younger, and they oh. were a bit still jokey and mucking about. Right. I just wanted to learn. Yes. I, you know, and I, I I remember we had to take a rifle to bits and put it back together again. Yeah. And I was, just did it, as I've, you know, as I've been taught, did it yeah. all, boom, 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 boom. And uh, at the end, the, the sergeant came up to me and said, you enjoyed doing that, didn't you? I said, oh, yeah, I did. You know, he said, and you, you care for it? And I said, well, yeah, if I'm going to do it. And he went, mm, and, he, and he put that down in his notes, oh, you see. right. And I was like that with everything I did. <clears throat> Conscientious. Conscientious. I mean, I'd, I'd changed <laughs> before, so... And, um, but you're conscientious. Yeah. Well, you enjoy... If you enjoy doing something... That's great, isn't it? If you don't enjoy doing something, you won't do it. Like when at school, 
don't want to do this line through the paper. Mm. But if you wanted to do something, you do it to your best. Mm. That's it, yeah. That's you, exactly, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. But so anyway, I got then I got posted to Millbank. Millbank, yeah. What a posting that was. Was it? Yeah, because you get your time off. Right. Vauxhall Bridge just down the road with a good pub. Yeah. You know, you go in, you can walk into London, you know, into West End, yeah. not far. You know, it's not, well, it's just by the House of Parliament and all that, isn't it? Yes. And um, so, at any rate, uh, I'm working in the hospital and the, the Captain Woodford, his name, was in charge okay. and he was a bit of a stickler. And he came in one day and said, oh, I have some sauce, I can't remember the name of the sauce. He said, right, who can tell me how to make a blah, blah sauce? And he said, oh, it's a reduction of, oh, that's all I need to know. You know how to do it. You said it's a reduction of. And then he was just trying to find, you know, that was enough yeah. for him. And then he carried on. And then a week later he said, called me in, because he was like this, go in. But, oh, yes, I but, yeah, right. He said, in a couple of weeks' time, you're going to, for six weeks, to Major General, whatever his name is, Southern Command. You're taking over from me, Sergeant Cook, who's going on a course. Right. So I packed up stuff and I went down to Cobham, uh, in a, in a, not Cobham in Kent, Cobham in, in Surrey. Surrey. And in the middle of the woods, because you know it, yeah, there was this house, beautiful house, and I was now a, a general's cook. For a six. general's cook. Now you told a major me general. A major. He general. is a very model of a major general. So yeah. I did that. Okay. For six weeks, came back to to Millbank. Yeah. Woodford comes along. From now on, you're going to work at weekend. Your weekends on. You are going to work at Major General Usher. General Officer Command in London District. Ah. In, and, of course, that was just in um, Chelsea. Chelsea. You had a big house in Chelsea, Beautiful. which you know because you came to it. Well, yes. Well, you came to both of them, actually. Yes. And um, so there I was now cooking for the general. Now, um, I, but at the Queen's funeral... He wears the feathers in his hat. He's the, well, the, there was the, quite a few with yeah, feathers. Yeah, but the one in... He's, he's he walked walk with one Prince the, Charles uh, and Princess. No, he didn't walk. He was on a horse. Oh, he was on a horse. In, in the front, I think. I can't okay. remember where he was now. But he's, he was the highest-ranking general. The model of a major... Yeah, and if you read my general. report when I left the army, yeah. he tells you all about that. So, yeah... And you were the chef for him. And Yeah, well, you met his wife, didn't you? I did. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's another story. That's another story. So I did that until I left the army. Yeah. Oh, and what, what about your haircut? Oh, well, yeah. yeah. He said to me, I'm fed up. You know, <laughs> he was a great bloke. He said, look, I let, I let my staff let their hair grow a little bit longer because he said, I don't, when I come home, he said, that particularly one of them that I'm on, you know, in the barracks. Yeah. So he he, my, he let my hair grow a little longer. Yeah. Anyway, one day, and this this used to happen very often. This particular weekend, I went there. He said, "I'm I'm away for the weekend. Um, go and get yourself a pass, get yourself a rail ticket, and go down and see your mum in Devon." That's how what sort of bloke he was. Yeah. And I said, "Oh, thank you, sir." So I went off. I had my thing, and I went to the the, court, uh, the sergeant. To get my warrant, my rail warrant, and this sergeant, he he was a medic, and he was in charge of, you know, the barracks bit. And he said, with hair like that, go and get haircut. Then I'll give you your ticket. I Aww. said, I haven't got time to get my haircut. I've got to catch me train. I don't care about that. He said, get your haircut. So I said, can I use your phone? <laughs> he said. Why? I said, I just want to use your phone. He said, why? I said, well, I'm going to phone my governor, General Officer Eustace, and tell him, you're holding me up from catching my train, which he's told me to catch. <laughs> there's my there's oh. ticket. So that's what sort of thing I enjoyed. <laughs> yeah, so it all worked out yeah. for you. So being a chef before you joined the army really enhanced your army career, if you like. Except, oh, absolutely. The bloke was right, except I didn't get... Except... I was cooking for, for sergeants, for staff sergeants. 
and all that. And I was still a flipping private, yeah. earning eight pounds, whatever it why was. Why were you? Why didn't they promote you? <sighs> I don't know. Perhaps they probably would after if I'd have stayed. They yes. probably would. Just a question of time, seeing yeah. how it all worked out. But, uh, but know, then, of course, you met me. <laughs> then I met you. put this enormous spanner in the works. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. uh, no, I, no. But it did have its bad point. I mean, my best mate, when I was at the hospital, he got posted. He got posted to Aidan. Aidan, which was a massive thing then. Oh, Aidan was a terrible place. Yes. Bombs, soldiers being killed. Yes. So, yeah. yes, it was all, you know. But there you are. Your, these are your good memories, weren't they? Oh, they were. I mean, I didn't have much else in good memories. Right. We'll say cheerio. Yes. And um, for another. Maybe next six time months. then. <laughs> oh, six months. Maybe next time then it's about how we met and yeah, all of that yeah. if you're interested. I mean, thank you for being interested. <laughs> yeah. That's all we can say. Yeah. Yeah. So we're off out for a walk now. Are we? It's right. going to rain. No, not going to rain. <coughs> I've got all the coats. We can go out. So I'm... Then I've got to come back and cook the dinner, I suppose. Oh, wow. Well. Still cooking. To. I'm getting in a right pickle with this blanket. Is it a blanket? Yeah. It's okay. keeping me warm. Yeah. I don't know what's the right side, what's the wrong <laughs> side. It's... There it is. Anyway. Oh, I just oh, my I'll eye. show I'll you later. Bye then. Oh, he's had it. Look. He's got oh. so bored, he's gone to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, Tilly, she's squashed down here, look. Oh, well, there we you go. put her there. That's it. So, cheerio. Bye. Yeah, so he wasn't too long in the army because he met me. He says he would have stayed for all his life because he thoroughly enjoyed doing... But, you see, he hadn't been sent away. He wasn't in combat. He was cooking. He was cooking for these lovely people, cooking with lovely food, working in the hospital, which gave him a, a real sense of, yeah, he, he liked doing that. Worthwhile. And, yeah, and then I came along, and I knew that I, would, I couldn't have married anyone in the army. I would have worried too much. So we saved up to buy him out. And we had to save up. Well, he, he was earning £8 a week and I was earning 17 And we had to save up £500 to buy him out of the army, which was a heck of a lot of money. In fact, it was the amount of money we needed to put down on the deposit for our house. So we had to save up that money and buy him out, which took almost a year. And... So from the moment I met him, really, I said, right, we're not going out, we're not doing this, we're not doing that. We saved every penny we could, and I think my dad helped me a bit. And then we started saving up for our house, and we saved the same amount for a deposit, which was well worth doing. So, so what we've bought is we bought an air fryer. I expect many of you have have an air fryer. It's not like a microwave that does it in a fraction of the time. It's like an oven, except it sits on your side and it cooks beautifully and it does bake. So I think you can put cakes in it. I haven't done that yet. I'm going to do apple pies. That's my first thing because I've got a nice lot of apples. So I'm going to see if an apple, apple pie fits. Um, so I know people do all manner of things but last night we had a chicken and we popped it in and I did it what I would do in my electric oven 180 180 for an hour and a half it would be but I put it on for 50 minutes to see how it would go but I did then have to put it on for another 24 minutes it cooked it beautifully so it's not that it cooks it quicker although it is fractionally cook quicker but it cooks it, well, obviously not using so much money because you haven't got to preheat the oven. It's not a big oven. Oh, it's super. And when mum came round last week, I said to Pete, I'm cooking today. So I put skate in, fresh skate. He'd been to the fish shop for three of us. That took seven minutes. Then I put in, he cuts all his potatoes up small. Didn't need to parboil them and all that. Just pop them in on the crisper plate. I think they took six minutes. They were beautiful. And then I did some peas on the top. What we're saying at the minute is everything you do on the top, all the veg, cook on the top. 
but anything you do in the oven let's try it in the air fryer because the price per the price for the oven running is fractional and also it cooks it so beautifully so I just show you my chicken and then I make a rice pudding in the oven and that takes about an hour and a half now some people they, they say to me I don't make a good rice pudding well if you put four ounces of rice in three ounces of caster sugar a knob of butter then if you like a grated bit of lemon or grated nutmeg or just leave it plain I put a little bit of vanilla in and then when it's finished I put some cream in so I always do that in the oven for about an hour and a half well that costs a lot of money now so I used my slow cooker this week and it it worked a dream I used double the amount because I wanted to take some round for mum so I used eight ounces of rice I didn't double the sugar I used um, just over four ounces of sugar, a little bit, well, a knob, two knobs of butter, and then at the end I put in a little bit of cream. And honestly, it was absolutely delicious. So I can really recommend the air fryer and the slow cooker. I'm sure you all use it anyway, but yeah, I think the air fryers are quite new, quite new for me anyway. Was that too many anyways? Well, quite new for me. So we've got cold chicken tonight and it didn't shrink it. It kept it really nice and plump and moist. And the fish was absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I just rubbed my hands over with the fresh fish with olive oil, put some salt on. As I say, whack that in. What I really wish I'd got you can get the air fryers with two drawers then you could put your potatoes in and your fish in but we've got one with one drawer just to see how it is fish in it's also got a keep warm mode so whilst Pete was cooking the vegetables yesterday we put the chicken on keep warm so it could just you know we always let it stand before we um, before we cut it up carve it so yes, the keep warm was beautiful. Everything was successful. So we did manage to get over to Stodmarsh, which is our local nature reserve, and it was the full moon last week. So you've got the start of the film is the full moon, and then we go on and we saw two new birds. Pete said, will you drive? I said, all right. I said, right, tell me the way then. Oh. I can't remember the way. I said, you can't remember the way. I said, it'll come to you as we're driving along. We started driving and it wasn't coming to him. So we had to go back, get the map. Oh no, it's by Grove Ferry, which is honestly, it's 40 minutes drive. It's an, an easy drive, you know. Well, it's because we haven't been out. Anyway, we saw two new birds, a grey neck phalarope. Hadn't seen one of those before. And every time we went to see um, cattle egrets, we always just missed them. It was being the story of our life. We said, oh yeah, oh they were here. No, just missed. But there was eight of them and they were beautiful and it was a beautiful day. So I got some film of some cattle egrets, which are obviously relatives to the little egrets that we have down on the beach here, which I have shown you before in my little films. Just to say, all my little films are in a playlist. So if you wanted to just watch the films and not have me gabbling on, then yeah, if you like birds, I know I have a new viewer who said, oh, I like the birds, I like the countryside and flowers. Well, there is a playlist of just, just the films. Anyway, there's a little film of the grey-necked phalarope, which is one of those birds that darts about. So it's only a snippet, but I got a shot to show you what it looked like. And I did slow down its wings opening as it was just going to fly a bit because it's nice to see the size of the bird and then the cattle egrets. Yes, you, you'll see those nice and plain. So I'm going to say cheerio and I'll see you next time and take care and enjoy this lovely autumn weather. Or I know some of my viewers, it's coming up for spring. So enjoy that too. I'll see you again then. Bye.
That's what dreams are made of. Hold it in your hand. Standing on a shipwreck, finding peace of land. Oh, that's what dreams are made of. Here is where you dwell. A glimpse of well, and in the line of expectations of what the future holds, to look for all the glitters in your search for gold. But we're ordinary people with just ordinary lives, the things we need to live. Survive. A summer wind, a peace of mind, the birds that sing, the undefined, the ground beneath. The undefined The ground 